Hello and welcome from Barcelona to the much anticipated first drive with the new Cupra Terramar. We have the opportunity to test it as a plug-in hybrid and want to share our first impressions of the Cupra Terramar with you as we drive around Barcelona. Previously, we introduced it to you in a static presentation from the Cupra City Garage in Berlin. Take a look at that first video that I've linked in the video description below to have a good foundation and context for this second video featuring our first driving experience, where we want to take a look at how its electric drive performs, how comfortable it is for travel, how the assistance systems work, and how the brand new Cupra Teramo drives. I'd say it's something you definitely shouldn't miss. Please take a moment to check if you're part of the Simply Electric community. If not, we'd be thrilled if you'd support us with a subscription. You won't fit there in the future either. The latest videos on electromobility and plug-in hybrids. Now let's get started with the brand new Cupra Teramo. We want to kick off with the Cupra Terama, And of course, I've gone ahead and reset the trip computer for you as well, just to make sure everything's clear and ready so that we can see what he's actually consuming. Yeah, he basically manages 550 kilometers with his 45 liter tank, which he filled with gasoline, plus 104 kilometers of electric range since the battery is nearly completely charged up now. Later on, we will also show you a long-term value from this vehicle as it's naturally somewhat, yes, was moved. We'll now drive a bit on the highway across the country and through the city to create a sort of one-third mix for you to see how much joy does such a Cupra Terramar bring on the road. As I said, feel free to watch the static video again. We have exactly the same car, also dark white on the outside with the burgundy leather interior. In reality, it might be the car from Berlin that we're driving today. Yes, probably. It's possible. Let's go. We want to measure the interior noise with you. We're driving 50 kilometers per hour. Sixty-four, sixty-five decibels. I'm going to increase the speed to approximately 70 kilometers per hour now. Around 66, 67 decibels. Let's speed up to 100. You can drive 100 here. Seventy decibels, and that's indeed quite a respectable level. As you can see, we have a rather rough road surface here. I'll make a quick check of the windows to see whether we have single or double glazing installed. We have double glazing, which means two panes are joined by a film. However, we are generally accustomed to different insulation values. That might be due to the road's rough surface, yes. You know, just a bit of everything related to the traffic here and all. Yeah, but we've definitely experienced worse. We're going to take the opportunity to explore and test the various assistance systems on the highway with you. We've got the advanced travel pilot system as well as the travel assist feature on board with the Cupra Terramar. That means we have a lane keeping assistant, we have a steering assistant, and we also have an adaptive cruise control system built in. It's really nicely observed here if Stefan films outside that it smoothly maintains the center of the lane without me needing to move my hands at all on the steering wheel. And he does that very, very well because the road here is a bit bumpy, kind of sways from left to right. Nevertheless, I really must admit that truly is quite a captivating story. As you can see, what we definitely have with the Travel Assist package is also the Volkswagen's traffic sign recognition system consistently maintains an impressive accuracy of 99% and it functions predictively. It relies on advanced cameras and a robust navigation system to detect changes in speed limits, particularly near construction zones and other regulated areas. The system smartly and meticulously adjusts the vehicle's speed by understanding our route, ensuring it consistently stays within legal speed limits. This significantly enhances and contributes to providing a smoother and more seamless overall driving experience. And it does this in such a manner that the vehicle adjusts to the new speed limit instantaneously at the point of change, rather than waiting to recognize the speed and then braking abruptly or erratically. I genuinely believe that's just a really wonderful story. Yeah. Driving those initial few meters provides a firm yet comfortably smooth impression. Wouldn't you say, Stefan? Yeah, it rolls well here so you don't sway back and forth. It's all good. People often say that the initial meters are actually some of the most critical meters in the process. We absolutely plan to carefully review our benchmark in detail at the end. That's Stefan's seat of the pants feeling, but you'll have to be a little patient for that. 
We want to have a conversation about the starting point with you. What exactly are we driving? We're driving the Cupra Terramar VZE Hybrid. This means it boasts a system performance of 200 kilowatts, translating to a total of 272 horsepower, which are generated by the combination of two powerful motors. On one hand, you get performance from the internal combustion engine. Under the hood, there's an about 1.5 liter inline four cylinder turbocharged engine, which delivers a punchy 177 horsepower. 177 horsepower, which is about 130 kilowatts, plus an electric motor that supports it with around 85 kilowatts, equivalent to approximately 115 horsepower, resulting in a combined total of about 272 horsepower system output. On board, we have a 45 liter tank, plus a corresponding battery pack, 400 volt system, which contains 25.8 kilowatt hours gross, from which we can draw 19.7 kilowatt hours net and then also be able to use it for driving routes. Now, many of your viewers are also very, very experienced with electric cars with us. And of course, we have some benchmarks for how much a car of this size and vehicle class typically tends to consume. And I genuinely believe that if you approach driving with a cautious foot on the electric pedal, you can realistically achieve your 100 kilometers range quite comfortably and easily without much effort. In the city, you might surpass that range, reaching 100, maybe 110, or even up to 120 kilometers. It would definitely be worth conducting a test in a daily life context. Yes, the 25.8 kilowatt hours gross are charged via alternating current, three phase with 11 kilowatts, or also with direct current using a CCS connector. That means you can, while traveling like we are today, during a lunch break or even at dinner, conveniently plug the car into the appropriate fast charging station, the 50 kilometers per hour charging capacity, and then ideally, you should indeed have the battery thoroughly recharged within half an hour, ensuring that almost the entire full capacity of the battery is once again fully available for you to utilize. That means for any of you who might still be feeling a bit unsure or uncertain, there's the Cobra Tavascan by Cobra, which we've already taken the opportunity to thoroughly showcase to you before. This is, so to speak, the purely electric variant of the Terramar. I'm exaggerating a bit here. If you're saying, I'm not ready yet, I don't want to switch to fully electric driving, I'll provide the video link in the description and here, feel free to check it out. Then you have the best of both worlds here. This means you can obviously cover your daily routines with a good 100 kilometers purely on electric. And then you also have a travel ready car for long distance trips where you go hybrid with an excellent consumption combining the electric drive and the combustion engine. You can also achieve a pleasant high range. Yes, all of this coupled with 450 liters of storage space in the trunk. Seats can be folded down. We showed you 40, 20, 40. So you can reach a total volume of around 1,400 liters. And yes, those are truly all excellent values, which in my opinion, can be utilized wonderfully to transform the Terramar into a fantastic new vehicle. And the power is really remarkable. Not just the 200 kilobov, the 200, 72 horsepower. We also have to talk about Newton meters of torque. The engine delivers 250 Newton meters, which is quite impressive for an 1.5 liter engine. The electric motor with its 85 kilowatts generates 330 Newton meters. So the Terramar hybrid has 400 Newton meters of torque. Stefan, wow. That's quite impressive. It goes from zero to 107.3 seconds. Sadly, today in Barcelona, we will won't be able to test it. Certainly another field trial will definitely have to take place in Germany. And his top speed, we can't reach that either due to speed limits unlike here. A knave who thinks evil. 215 kilometers per hour top speed. Yes. Quite good. Very lovely. So with the Terramar, you really have a true little powerhouse like one of those, well, you might say a friendly wolf in sheep's clothing, right? Yeah. Though I think it does a bit more, I believe. It might also be a little ramp source. Oh. Plug-in hybrids offer an advantage with two options. You can drive fully electric as we're currently doing in the bustling city of Barcelona. Or you can choose to fully utilize the hybrid mode when you're setting off on those longer trips. And so you're naturally cruising around in the city with zero emissions if you choose to think of it that way. And it's nice and quiet, very comfortable because we simply have a suspension system here that surely provides excellent 
Cupra specifically maintains a certain firmness, allowing you to really glide smoothly through the curves, yet naturally provides a pleasing amount of travel comfort. When driving over the manhole covers here, you won't wobble around excessively, and everything is securely fastened and firmly connected here to maintain stability. And that's also what you're envisioning, that you can effortlessly manage your daily life completely electrically in the future. And yes, for those who might still experience some lingering apprehension or hesitation, Yes, range anxiety could indeed be a real concern for them, and for those who remain hesitant about fully committing to an all-electric vehicle, there's always the reassuring option of using the combustion engine for additional support when needed. Driving the latest Cupra model through the beautiful streets of Barcelona is genuinely enjoyable, and naturally, it draws everyone's attention. All eyes are attracted to its stunning exterior color, dark white, which is quite similar to my shirt. I aim to achieve a perfect match on this occasion, just to provide a little visual treat. What I like about the Cupra Terra Mar and what makes it really noticeable, especially in city environments, is its overall vehicle proportions. That means you have a vehicle measures 4 meters 51 in length, 1 meter 86 in width, and stands at 1 meter 57 tall. It really is an ideal size, which allows you to comfortably and smoothly navigate through the lively streets of beautiful Barcelona. Yes, the turning circle is 11.49 meters. Cupra took their measurements with great precision and detail to ensure accuracy. They stated 11 and a half meters, but it's 11.49. Finding a suitable spot in Barcelona might be challenging. I stand here. I can also stand right here in the middle of the Castle Kerr again. Let's try it out. Stefan, pan over there and zoom in. Here's the 37th edition of the America's Cup. Yes, that's great. Now the bus has remained. Thanks to the bus in that sense too. Exactly. And for this 37th America's Cup, that was also the world premiere. Now we can. Exactly. I believe this was the starting point at the harbor. There's also a special edition, a limited model in the run. 1,337 units. If you happen to be searching for a unique and special Cupra Terramar, consider reaching out to your local Cupra dealer and asking them whether it's still possible for you to obtain this particular edition. In the Cupra Terramar, you also have adapted systems in the form of drive. On one hand, you can customize your profile individually. Let's get right to it. We're driving in comfort. Then there's performance, of course, if you want to be a bit more dynamic, like we actually want to be, plus the Cupra mode. And for that, we've got Stefan. Take a look here. Also another button so we can get there quickly while on the go. And instantly have the full 200 kilowatts of power at our disposal. If we shift to the individual mode, we also have the opportunity to further customize and adjust the settings here. Extremely good indeed. The capability to adjust all the systems here, such as steering, engine, engine sound, adaptive cruise control, and climate control, tailored to perfectly meet our individual requirements. That's obviously a great story because I can imagine that many of you might also want that spread between comfort and performance at some point, right? Yeah. Certainly. Absolutely, that's quite possible. We want to simulate the full parking process here together with you, so we'll naturally switch the gear selector accordingly. Positioned here on the steering wheel, Stefan, proceed to carefully shift it into reverse gear now. And then you'll notice that you have some really excellent support here with the rear view camera assistance. But it does seem a bit pixelated, right? Yeah. Bit blurry, yeah. I hear a beep here, even though nothing should be causing it, correct? Yeah, not really. Exactly, since there's just an open parking spot. That confused me. I really have no idea what the ultrasound sensor might have possibly managed to detect in this situation here. Naturally, we want to carefully pull up directly to the very edge of the curb here. You can see right here that we're standing nice and straight. In this spot, you also have the added support once again. Then you have the option to switch over to the left side, switch over to the right side, or also select the rear camera. When we shift back to drive at the front, I have a sense that it doesn't operate again in this mode. That it goes back to the front camera. We just had that before on the first try, so now we switch back to reverse, switch to forward, and now it has the front camera. He's not quite warmed up today. But sorry, look at the picture, how far the VW is away. And when I go up here, somehow something is off with the proportions. Well, it's just so pixelated, right? Look, when we switch, everything is so grainy and pixelated, right? But it may, of course, be that we still have a pre-production vehicle here. Yes, but of course, that definitely needs to be much sharper. If you can't park, there's still the parking assistant. But this takes too long for me. That's not fun at all. So, bear with me. What I find cool about Cupra is that they've now changed their warranty period 
and are offering a standard five-year warranty. Okay? That's good. Take a look at the detailed specs to see everything that's included. That's pretty remarkable for a premium brand from Germany. Yes, we're nearly the only ones with that. Exactly, but I believe it's also quite confident on their part to say that we provide good quality, we manufacture excellent cars, so we can extend our warranty period. Because we just know that our products hold up well and function properly. So there's definitely a sense of confidence behind it, wouldn't you agree? In reality, isn't having the Terramasso in the city sort of a complete waste of its potential capacity? Yes, I think it actually belongs more on the machine. Yeah, or definitely on fast country roads, because you can, of course, equip it even more performance-oriented. Der reduzierte Text liegt bei ungefähr 14% Kürzung bezüglich der von Ihnen vorgenommenen Forderung. Die erhaltene Version fällt in den von Ihnen gewünschten Bereich des Wortzieles. But please take a moment to look at the leasing and financing conditions as Cupra often introduces some truly fantastic deals and in my opinion, that's what really sets them apart. The gross list price also into a new ratio. Yes, you can optionally get it with an adaptive suspension, giving you an even greater range between comfortable driving and, of course, very sporty driving. And you have the option to additionally equip the Akebono performance brakes if desired. Akebono, right? Akebono, yes. So not Brembo, which we're more familiar with and which Cupra sometimes installs, but rather Akebono. All right then. And I think our subject unfortunately doesn't have it. Otherwise, we could have tested it again here. However, the colleague over here from Barcelona is definitely having trouble parking. Yeah, it probably has an even worse rear camera than all the others here. I think he doesn't have any. So if he had a nice Cupra Terramar, it would probably be a breeze for him. Definitely. It's splendid how we are being guided through such beautiful, charming streets here in Barcelona. Here's a helpful travel tip for you. I think this is actually our third visit to the city of Barcelona this year. Tavascan, Formentor, and now Terramar. So take a closer look at your travel plans and perhaps think about including Barcelona as a fabulous destination. Indulge in sightseeing, vibrant city life, enriching cultural experiences, and the inviting beach. Stefan will clearly demonstrate it for everyone right here on the navigation system and then you can easily connect everything. Yes, with this system you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto available on board. This essentially means that you can easily mirror your smartphone right here and fully integrate it into the vehicle system. You can certainly use the convenient built-in navigation system that's available right here. Cupra has now finally equipped this model with a fast processor for enhanced performance on board. I find it really great that you can also properly swipe back and forth. And I find the entire menu structure, if we look at it again here, we already showed you in the static video, now really snappy, truly modern. Everything here is artfully illuminated and stylishly backlit. Thus, in that regard, you are thoroughly equipped with the most advanced and latest generation of Cupra software. We've got a quick update for you concerning the consumption so far. We've now driven almost 20 full kilometers. Purely electric. Wurz in coma, 6 kilowatts occasionally on the highway because I accelerated to feel the pull. Briefly switched on the combustion engine and it shows 2 liters. But those are great consumption rates, which, when you calculate it up to 19.7 kilowatt hours of net extractable, can also achieve excellent driving range with it. Yes, that's truly impressive indeed. When under 15, you'll surely achieve 100 kilometers. Perfect conditions in Barcelona today. It's 27 degrees. Every electric car loves that. And we obviously need to see how it is in winter. Is he sensitive to it then? Because we also know that in winter, it tends to consume three or four kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers more. But even then, he would still achieve his 100 kilometers of purely electric range. Of course, we also want to take this opportunity to show you the Cupra Terramar from the outside again. You can see here very, very nicely once again, what I think is the visually striking front section with the generous sporty grille. Behind it is the one and a half liter turbocharged petrol engine. We also have a really, really nice silhouette of the daytime running lights here. Standard equipment includes LED headlights. Optionally, you can choose HD matrix headlights and I recommend them if you're on the road frequently. And we have here very, very stylish 20 inch rims in a beautiful black satin mat, also wonderfully accented here with the Cupra color. I absolutely love it. Charging is done here on the side. As mentioned earlier, either via Type 2 AC 3 phase 11 kilowatts or DC with 50 kilowatts. 
you really have to picture it. You have got the combustion engine sitting right here in the front. Then there's the electric motor, followed by the six-speed transmission, which powers the vehicle and keeps everything running smoothly. Yeah, overall, I believe in the Dark Void, it's a very, very beautiful violet metallic, and it looks incredibly, incredibly cool. Especially because everything is nicely finished in matte black, or like the roof rails, in a glossy black. The only thing I don't like very much is, of course, the classic, the shark fin. I believe we've said that 123,000 times. And what I also don't like is because others might be able to design it a bit more attractively by integrating this knob here, this rear window wiper up here, into the rear spoiler. And then you would have such a nice clear silhouette here. Yes, if Stefan steps back a little, you can also see the three-dimensionality of the taillights very, very nicely. Then here, once again, with the Cooper triangles, it is very, very beautifully accomplished, showcasing the Cooper logo illuminated in a fitting manner once more. That looks really, really stylish and also fits really, really well. Then I also find the rear diffuser, which gives the whole thing a nice wide performance look. Yes, and if we let our eyes wander over here again, I believe this might actually be quite an interesting car option for you, particularly if you're in the market for a powerful plug-in hybrid. Later on, there will be an e-hybrid model available with somewhat reduced power. In that case, the combustion engine has 150 horsepower instead of 177 giving you a slightly lower system output and probably a more attractive entry price. I might speculate that he could potentially be bordering somewhere around 50,000, but as I mentioned before, that's really just a rough estimate at best. Simply Electric also takes a spin with you in beautiful Barcelona. As I mentioned earlier, that's a turning circle measuring 11.49 meters. You can really see this quite clearly here as I'm just driving around Stefan in a circle right now. That, of course, is something that must never be missing from any of our videos. And with that being said, let's delve into Stefan's renowned and infamous popometer. Stefan, how do you find the ride comfort in general? We've driven along the highway, ventured through country roads, and navigated the bustling streets of Barcelona. What does your seat of the pants assessment say? It's comfortable, firmly comfortable, as we know from Cupra. But even things like bumps and manhole covers, it takes those very relaxed, very smooth. It doesn't hurt, it's very convenient. Yes, I have to say, Cooper has once again developed a very, very well done and impressive suspension here. Where I believe you have an outstanding and versatile range, like on one hand, to swiftly zip down the highway at speeds of up to 215 kilometers per hour. At the top, I believe you can definitely enjoy winding roads, even though it's an SUV, I think it certainly brings a lot of fun indeed. Yes, I think so and where you can, of course, comfortably and efficiently commute from point A to point B within an urban environment, enabling you to handle your shopping, errands, as well as your daily journey to work with much greater ease and convenience. I believe that the Cooper Terra Mar could potentially be extremely very interesting and exciting for you. And now we will smoothly transition to the conclusion. Suppose you're intrigued by a car that is capable of managing two different worlds. The electric world, equipped with a large battery, hats off, in addition to the combustion engine world, allowing you to travel in hybrid mode comfortably on long distances. Sure, 56,000 euros and a little extra at the base level, that really takes quite a big bite out of the bottle. However, I believe you also receive the Cupra quality along with it, an image provided to you and possibly then also a particularly nice unique selling point because let's be honest, you don't really get to spot Cupra models leisurely cruising down the streets in our local neighborhood all that frequently. I can definitely see you wanting to stand out a bit more from other brands, aiming for uniqueness and making an impact on the road. Of course, the Cupra driver is really a bit immersed in their own unique and distinctive world. Absolutely, I highly recommend visiting your nearest Cupra dealer of choice and arranging a test drive there as soon as you can. The car is anticipated to officially launch on the market here in Germany by the end of this year. I think placing orders might indeed be possible now. Take the opportunity to form your own experience and feel free to share your detailed opinion about the brand new Cooper Terramar in the comments section right here. And that brings us to the conclusion of today's video, where we explored the first test drive of the brand new Cooper Terramar. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up. Please feel free to check if you're part of the Einfahrer electric community. If not, we'd be delighted if you could support us with a subscription. And if you haven't yet watched the complete review of the car, we encourage you to take a look at the video where we filmed it in a static manner at the Cupra City Garage. Thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy and see you again soon. Yours truly, Ollie. Hey, Stefan.
I find it quite sexy when these brand symbols light up in the dark. What do you think? That's already nice. So neat, eh? Complete silhouette, truly chic indeed.